favorite business program on television, Moneyline, with me, Nancy. All right, joining me right now is my guest from Lagos, uh, Johnson Chuku, who is the Chief Executive Officer at Kari Asset Management. Mr. Chuku, good morning to you, and thanks for joining me on the show today. How are you? How is Lagos? Uh, Lagos is good. Good morning. My pleasure joining you. Nice. Just uh, talk to me about what's happening around the marketplace, how the marketplace is perceiving what's happening in the political space right now. Uh, just this morning, we got news about uh, the security blockage at the National Assembly. How is the market reading uh, this political uh, activities coming through? It seems that, you know, every day we get to see something coming in from the politicians and what have you. How is the marketplace reading this? Well, the market has been quite uncomfortable with it in the, in the political space. Uh, we've seen this year basically dominated by political activities. Unfortunately, most of those political activities are not in the positive. There have been a lot of frictions here and there that has kept away investors from uh, being aggressive in investment within the market. Um, so, and then on a daily basis, you keep hearing and reading or coming across new, new development in the political space. Uh, all of them not uh, driving confidence in the economic space. Um, so if you look at what has happened today, what has happened in the past couple of months, uh, you will observe that that has reflected in the volume of uh, investment by portfolio investors, for foreign portfolio investors. It has also reflected in the market capitalization, the performance of the market capitalization. So um, on, on, a, on a balance, one would say the market has been uh, quite uh, uncomfortable with development in the political space. Now, the issue is that the presidency has come forth to say that if the NAS, that the National Assembly doesn't reconvene, that it may just shut the government down. We do know that the president, before he proceeded on his vacation to the United Kingdom, he did send a request to the National Assembly uh, for INEC, environment, and all of that. How do you see this playing out? Well, I think the statement that the, if the National Assembly does not reconvene to have passed the, national, the supplementary budget of about 200 and uh, 28 billion um, that uh, the government will shut down is a sum of exaggeration. Uh, granted that some of the components of that budget is very critical for the political well-being of the country, uh, I do not think the use of the word shutdown is the appropriate word. Simple is that the government shut down when the government can no longer incur the current expenditure. We know that the 2018 budget has been passed into law. Uh, there's a provision of 3.5 one two trillion naira in the uh, recurrent, for the current expenditure in the 2018 budget. The government had liberty to spend that. Uh, but what the supplementary budget is um, referring to is a budget that has a component of 164 billion for INEC. So I think the INEC portion is the one that is very critical because without uh, approving funds for INEC to begin the process of the 2019 election then we might not be able to have that election in February next year. And for me, that is time-bound, that is urgent, and that should be a reason why the National Assembly should consider reconvening to pass the supplementary budget. But I do not think it would have anything to do with the government short down because the government is in a position to continue to spend the economy because the budget has been approved, and the government is in a position to incur our capital expenditure budget provision of $2.87 trillion because that has also been approved. Okay, final question for you. Uh, in whose interest do you think all this is uh, uh, playing out for? Uh, you know, because it, we do know that elections will be held next year. The politicians perhaps are also vying for, uh, will be vying for spaces, re-election or new elections and all of that. And a lot of analysts have said that, you know, Nigerians' interests are not even put forward here as it, as it stands. What do you think? Well, I wouldn't take it from that perspective because having the latest smooth election, having a successful election is in the interest of everybody who is in Nigeria and interested in Nigeria's welfare and development. So anything that will affect that election will affect each and every one of us in one way or the other. Uh, but the conflict, the friction, the fights that have been going on between the National Assembly members and the presidency, one could say may not all be altruistic. They may not all have been geared towards improving the welfare and well-being of the citizens. They are not driven towards reducing the level of infant mortality or mm -hmm. maternal mortality. They are not driven towards improving the policy of education or the coverage of education to, the, or, or, um, to those who are outside the educational system. So uh, on that basis, one could say that the conflicts and the disputes 
have not been addressing those infrastructure and social weakness we have in the, in, the, in the country, but more of achieving political supremacy. But if you want to drill drill down to the issue of supplementary budget, as it relates to INEC, I think the issue of having a central election is in our all overall self-interest. But I also want to point out something. The supplementary budget the federal, the federal government sent to the National Assembly has a major flaw. And that flaw is that it is requesting for environment from the constituency projects. I think that could lead to a major conflict because I do not imagine the National Assembly members having to take six months to approve the budget so that they could include their constituency projects. We'll be willing in the next few months to allow for environment from those constituency projects to INEC. I think the government should have just sent the budget that will require for appro- an approval of $228 billion, once it's $4 billion of which for INEC, from even the government has to borrow to do that. Because the election for me is very critical for our political development. All right. I think I will leave it at that, Mr. Chuku. Thanks for joining me today.